Pulse oximeters. It doesn't matter if you have the Bentley of all pulse oximeter, if you have the best, the Cadillac of pulse oximeters, it does not matter. It, like, it makes zero point if it's uh, the highest, met, you know, medical grade version versus the one that you got for $25, $50 at a, you know, CVS or Walgreens or Walmart or online. It doesn't matter. The one thing you always want to look at is FDA approval. Okay, I'm gonna state. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say that again. FDA approval. Okay, if you have if you have a pulse oximeter and it is not FDA approved, not regulated, uh, then it might not be a good pulse oximeter to use when you want to really try to justify what's going on with your blood saturations and heart rate and, and uh, things of that nature. Does a pulse ox measure oxygen? What does a pulse oximeter do? Does it measure oxygen? Does it measure oxygen? Because it doesn't. It never has. Because a pulse oximeter is not a gas analyzer. Okay? It is not designed to be that way as well. You use a pulse oximeter to determine oxygen saturation points inside the body. But they're assumed. What I mean by that is that the pulse oximeter has no idea if it's oxygen or another gas. So I'm going to put my pulse oximeter onto my finger. I'm going to look at the saturations here. Here's the first number. Now that is not correct until, even though those are great numbers, we have to look at a clinical perspective. This is not correct until when? 30 seconds. What I want to see on a pulse oximeter is I want to see good pulse pressure lines. Okay, and what's the best finger to use for pulse oximeters? The ring finger is the most vascular finger. If you want a very accurate reading, you would use a very vascular finger, like the ring finger. That's the reason why they call it a ring finger. It's the most vascular finger. So, now, once I put it on, this right here is a clamp. It has a spring load on it, meaning... What it's going to do is going to push the blood out. This is the reason why you wait 30 seconds, by the way. So if I push all that blood out and my pulse oximeter is trying to read what's there, but all that blood got pushed out, then the readings will be falsified. They'll be false. They'll be erroneous is what we call it. Okay. What's the point in this? Is this right here works the same way. It presses a little pushes a little pressure around your either your index, ring finger, middle finger, you know, but in this case we're going to use a ring finger. It pushes the blood out. Okay? Now I have to wait for the blood to circulate back through. Okay? So we want to wait 30 seconds and sometimes we need to wait more. For some people they need because they have Renard's disease, they have different vascular diseases, they might have to wait a minute just to get an accurate reading. Some people might actually have to wait a little bit longer than that. Keep that in mind. Pulse oximeters has never measured oxygen. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I take this off and I wave it in the air like I just don't care, is it measuring the oxygen in this room right now? No, it just says the finger's out and nothing's reading. It has never measured oxygen a day in its life. It assumes oxygen. It's assuming it's oxygen. These are pulse pressure lines. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clench my hand. Like, let's say I'm gripping something. Let me grip. Let me grip this pen. Okay. Not very tight. I'm just going to grip this pen. What's happening? I'm just gripping the pen. That's all I'm doing. What's happening? There's no auction reading. The last reading was 98, but it's not picking up auction reading. Why? Am I dying? No, of course not. The pressure waveform. When I was gripping with my fist, it was preventing blood flow from you know, from blood from circulating, and that will cause a bad reading. All right. Another problem I see is low batteries, too much ambient light. 
Thing, uh, thick fingernail polish or very dark fingernail polish will also cause an erroneous reading. We have to be educated to make proper decisions. If you're not educated on how to use something as simple as a pulse oximeter, but you have to understand it has never measured oxygen. I'm sorry to tell you, but if you want an oxygen analyzer, plan on spending around $15,000. If you want to see your own CO2, you want to buy, let's say, a Capno check, which is a very small device that measures exhaled CO2, and you want to know what your CO2 level is, that little thing is about the same size of a pulse oximeter, the end title, the small Capno check. Uh, we usually put them on Anbu bags, and that runs around 2000 if not higher. I know because I bought mine for $2,000, end title, but I'm, I'm, I'm a clinician. I have to use the devices like that. You know, you shouldn't have to know your own CO2 levels. All you really want to understand is a good way to understand how high your CO2 is, is what? Looking at your pulse rate. Look at your pulse rate. Okay, the higher the CO2, the higher the pulse rate is going to be.